Hey everybody. All right, so I'll show you what I've been working on a little bit in this mess. I've, I've cleaned and then it's got messy again. <laughs> uh, I, got a, I got a bunch of stuff I'm working on. Try to get some of it done this weekend, but I'm gonna be going out of town and all that kind of stuff for a couple of days with the family. But um, still, I got a little bit of time tonight, so I'm gonna try to get some of it done tonight. But I've been working on hydrogen production and, and you know, the, re the main reason why is because uh, I'm interested in sustainable type of living and stuff like that. And uh, if you can take s the energy from the sun from into a solar panel, it's difficult to store the energy um, in, in batteries. I mean, you can do it, but the batteries only last so long. I guess there's al there'll always be some type of mechanical failure out over time. It's just, you know, the way things work. That's why there's really no perpetual motion in a sense. Uh, it's, um, change is the universal constant but anyways <laughs> uh, I'm, I had some ideas on a hydrogen cell design and one is um, using screen material because it increases the surface area um, so that's what I did here uh, I've tried a, a few different variants and the best result I've had so far is a short is a shorted inner cell and a unshorted outer cell and what I mean by that is that the uh, inner cell is uh, it, it's all touching right and the outer cell it doesn't touch at all it stays open i kind of got that uh playing around with that idea from maker j 101 when he was doing some induction zvs induction heating i'm pr pretty sure he's using the zvs circuit um but uh it was interesting when he had a pipe that wasn't fully uh connected it would just it wouldn't absorb uh, the energy really it almost like a it like deflected the energy and wouldn't heat up but when he used a solid pipe um, or a pipe that, you know, was connected, then it would heat up. Um, now, uh, this cell actually has a potential in it naturally. It's naturally occurring. It drops down to about 250 millivolts, which is pretty low, but, uh, but there still is a natural occurring uh, potential difference in the cell. Uh, why that is, I'm not quite sure, but here is the, uh, the really experimental part of this whole thing is I was looking for a uh, wires that wouldn't corrode because I'm, I was having problems with wires that would corrode. I didn't even attempt to use copper or anything like that because of uh, the um, the uh, electrolytic deposition that would happen. Uh, so I looked into nitinol um, and w was just curious to see if anyone's tried using nitinol in in a hydrogen cell or or any electrical occurrences with nitinol. Now its resistance is is kind of high. Um, but I've been thinking about using nitinol in electrical systems for a while now because as, as heat increases, you could have a natural break. So it would be a safety mechanism. So you have a, um, you know, the nitinol would be formed a certain way. It'd have, it'd have a memory to be curved. And when there's a, when the heat, when the amperage, you know, or the total current rises too high, um, it would separate and create for spark gaps. This is for spark gap ideas and stuff like that. Um, but, uh, so I just decided, you know, well, why don't I check it out and see what, what its properties are as far as water goes. And if it, um, if it will deposit, it's, uh, I believe there, um, it has a nickel, nickel oxide layer on the outside. I believe that's, that I, ha I'm not, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, but, um, it is a uh, nickel titanium wire, right? And, uh, so far it hasn't had any corrosion or anything so it's been working really well on this bottom stuff is surgical stainless steel um uh, mesh wire mesh and uh yeah it's been working pretty well right now i just have it on the pulse width modulator at the at 12 volts and the idea is you know you take the um you take the solar panels and you uh, run it into what would be like a capacitor bank just for filtration and to get a large enough uh, current amount and then you would store off and then you have an electrolysis set up you know the capacity capacitor bank might be a little expensive so uh, even a loom battery banks you know reconditioned batteries with a loom a loom act as act as capacitors they don't store a whole lot of power but they'll they would do the job and um, you know for self sustainability you would you would run your solar panels into that setup using an in inverter and the usual stuff but then you would make hydrogen and um, 
and then store the hydrogen off. And I was really interested in this one because I've always been interested in NASA and what they do in space. And that's one of the things that they do to get water and oxygen um, is electrolysis. But uh, but I was really interested in this a couple years ago and I was researching it and I found a guy named Hydrogen for Kids, I believe is his name. And uh, he has a whole setup and it's quite expensive, a lot of military solar panels and uh, you know, I think he has like a, a $8,000 uh, electrolysis. It looks like a, a deep freezer, you know, you'd have in your, <laughs> your garage or whatever. Um, but he was using that and storing off an old derelict, or not derelict, old, um, reconditioned propane tanks, unpressurized, the the pure hydrogen. It wouldn't be safe to store uh, the Browns gas or the HHO necessarily because a, a slight spark or leak might ignite, but pure hydrogen is actually very safe to store off. So he was storing that off and then he would, ha he would burn it for power or he would, um, or he would uh, use it for heating, use it for cooking and and had a completely self-sustained setup so that was really inspirational to me and so but i'm just i'm still very much a rookie at electrolysis cells and and i'm just starting to kind of explore that side of things um so that, that's kind of what this is so enough of the gibberish i guess uh so right now it's sitting at 600 but like i said it probably drops down to it, it does drop down to about 250 millivolts um, and probably has very very little current um, or amperage, I should say. I don't. I guess I shouldn't use the word current because uh, current is kind of the uh, old stuff. The old terminology of current is power, or is the total, the total energy in electromotive force. So, um, but uh, so I'll turn this on, and I'll turn it all the way up. You can see this the cell rise. Actually, we'll go about halfway first. So we'll go. Uh, it's a fully charged battery. We'll go about six. Six volts at 900, oh, yeah, 100 milliamps. So at six volts at 100 milliamps, we are producing very little amount of hydrogen. And this is just tap water. I didn't put any ele electrolyte in there, but you do see some bubbles forming. This cell's been sitting a while, but those bubbles, those are just bubbles I'm shaking off. But I'm trying to shake them off just so we can see an actual production. Oh, and I used it as an insulator, um, a membrane, and it was nylon. And holy cow, nylon is expensive. I guess it's just because it's they don't, it's not used anymore, or I guess it might be because I'm not, I've never wore nylon. <laughs> but but uh, but uh, that was kind of what I used as a in between membrane, and it's worked really well. So now we're starting to produce hydrogen. There's like a heat up process, I would say, or pre start where. Um, now, there's like a dielectric breakdown in the water kind of needs to it kind of takes a little bit of time but uh, so we're still at 100 milliamps and producing very minute amount of hydrogen and about a half uh, half a voltage now I'm been playing around with some um, s switching circuits and some uh, blocking oscillators and a bunch of different setups been trying to get this uh, high power MOSFET to, to work properly and it's not working I might just switch back to a transistor but I'm really trying to I want to increase the voltage on the cell without increasing the the total current draw or the amperage as well the, the joules that are delivered so um, so that's what I've been trying to do um, but now I'm going to turn this up we're going to just go to the full power of 12 13 volts fully charged battery like I said oh just that's it this is across the cell too so um, it's an interesting interesting thing that happens actually to control this experiment a little more I should probably pull the charging off there we go that's more accurate and I can't get a good resistance across the cell either I tried to and um, I don't know if it's just the meters I have or whatever I'll have to do a calculation by using the oscilloscope and why it's running and, and do a calculation for what drops across the across across uh, what the voltage drop across the cell itself um, I'm not gonna really trust this digital multimeter just like I don't really trust the 200 milliamps it's at right now it's probably it could be more it could be less my guess is probably more but <laughs> but uh, the pulse width modulator really helps the, the cell efficiency and um, 
and you can as you can see there's a decent amount of production and it slowly climbs and gets better and better um, just takes a bit but there's all kinds of uh, experiments I, I'd like to I've been thinking about with hydrogen and I finally just had to start doing them so this is one of them and um, and I'm really trying to get the, just the basic design set up uh, I'll, I'll implement a bubbler and all that kind of stuff and so I can oh tell me my lighter's not dead Let's see if I can get you can hear the pops and uh, you know I'm still yet to determine if this is um, HHO gas or or um, just hydrogen gas uh, or just oxygen gas and, but it does have a nice pop to it eventually uh, occasionally so on the larger bubbles but uh, you can see it's producing decently although there is a lot of uh, bubbles on the side I probably should have cleared those off but you should be able to see it and the, the close proximity to the other outside cell between the electrodes between the anode and cathode kind of develops a lot more bubbles so that's why back back there it has a little more production Just bump it a little bit so we can get some of the bubbles off and see its actual production rate I don't have any flow meters or anything like that right now which would be helpful and uh, yeah so that's kind of what I'm working on one thing I'm working on you can see there's a much closer proximity here to over on the other side compared to over on the other side so um, so that's why it's producing a little more and that's that's what I've been working on besides uh, I'm gonna wrap a new resonator coil or secondary um, I've been trying to clean this place but it seems like every time I clean it I just get it dirty again oh and that's what I'm gonna use to wrap it I got a I got some uh, materials so I can cut my cut my board and put together a, a much larger coil winder instead of the one I, I got one up, up there that I made but it's pretty small and um, yeah so anybody has any questions or or comments and suggestions or anything like that feel free uh, just so I can show you that this is night and all here watch this Woo. look at it move See? memory wire um, so yeah that's uh, that's pretty much what I got going on right now looks like the missus wants to talk to me so I will end off thanks for watching guys